It's not just a WWE thing. It's a wrestling thing. When I think about where wrestling is today, it makes me very sad. Like, I even started off the year thinking I'm going to make wrestling fun again and at least try to have some fun talking about it. But it's so bad for me. It's so tough to find things to make fun of or have fun with. That that whole kind of thought is kind of just dropped by the wayside. Wrestling's in a bad place. In a really, really bad place. Not the WWE. Not... Impact Wrestling, everybody, it is in a bad place. It really is. Now, maybe you'll have some that will come on and say, well, look at some of the crowds at some of the independent events. Get real. Wrestling is in a bad, bad way. It really is. As an industry as a whole, it's the worst off that I personally in three decades have ever seen. And thinking about it, there are so many things I would love nothing more than to change about the industry. But knowing it's unrealistic to change some of them for a variety of factors, and some of them just won't change for other factors. But I think about it, if I could change anything about professional wrestling today, maybe just one thing, and one thing alone, that it would instantly instantly increase my enjoyment of the product. One thing. And, and I think about the things that I've seen happen to the business over the years and the way the business has evolved over the years. I look at how the internet, just like with a lot of things, can bring some good to the table and brings a lot of bad. And in many ways, the internet ruins everything. Like I even think about it from a basketball standpoint. I can only imagine how much more hate a Michael Jeffrey Jordan would have received if social media was around the time that he played. People would have been tired of him being forced down their throats by the media. People would have resented the fact he was talking about being the greatest of all time. They would have been tired of the ass-looking society. Even though he saved you from basketball-playing aliens called the Monstars, that's the thanks he would have gotten. And I look at LeBron now, and... Some of it is of his own doing. Some of it is just the climate that we live in. People always hate him for certain reasons, no matter what he does, no matter what he does throughout the rest of his career. But just in general, the internet has ruined everything in a lot of ways for wrestling because we know so many of the secrets. And while some people will sit there and talk about how um, we only know uh, what they've let us know, but the problem is, is that they've let us know pretty much everything at least all the major important bullet points. And, you know, the way that they've done it and the shamelessness with, with people in the industry have done it has really impacted the way, as fans, with any sense of a pulse of what is going on in the business, uh, view the product, ultimately. The internet has ruined it in so many other ways, too. I think about it from doing wrestling videos on this channel. There are times where I'll get ready to address topics and I'll kind of think, I wonder what the reaction is going to be. Sometimes I think I've chosen a very controversial topic that will get a lot of people pissed at me um, and it doesn't. And then there are other times I'll do a video and I'll think, oh, it's going to be really hard for people to disagree on this one. This seems like a pretty safe common sense kind of, no, it freaking isn't. Some of those videos are the ones that get the most hate. Some of those videos are the ones they get the most anger and vile directed in my direction. So I think about that sometimes in terms of trying to play to an audience and try to appeal to an audience and how much I frankly struggle to do that now. It can be really tough to do this. So I can only imagine how tough it is for a wrestling company, in particular, let's say the WWE, because this is really a phenomenon mostly unique to them, where no matter what you do, even if you did good things with somebody, People, if they don't want to, are never going to get behind it, no matter what you do. People are going to crap on that guy, no matter what you do. It, they did it with Cena. They did it with Roman Reigns. They do it with certain types of baby faces that don't come from certain types of backgrounds or work a certain type of style, whatever the case might be. But then on the flip side, the guys that are supposed to be the villains, that are supposed to be booed, if the fans don't want to boo them, 
they'll just cheer them, and it just screws up the whole dynamics of everything. It can become really hard, no matter how crappy the writing is, no matter how crappy the storytelling is, it can be really, really hard to get accomplished what you need to get accomplished when the fans are trying to hijack crap every step along the way, and eventually, in a lot of cases, ultimately do. The whole dynamics of the character and the story change, and it just doesn't work. And that, in part, ties into the internet. That, in part, ties into a lot of things. But to me, on so many levels, we talk about viewership every time, all the time. You, you can see it on all the wrestling websites and on social media. Like, even those clear-cut things that can't be argued. Like, for example, Impact Wrestling's viewership has dropped 60-70% over the last three to four years. This is not a healthy company. This is not a company going strong. They still exist, and that's great. But let's not pretend that they're great. But people will still pretend like they are great. Let's not pretend a WWE over the past 10, 15 years has seen their domestic audience decrease at least by 50%, if not more. Let's not pretend that the product is really good now. Because if it was really good, more people would be watching. And that's the way it is. But the internet has ruined so many things about wrestling, from the dirt sheets to the gossip, to the revealing of secrets, to the talking about backstage bullshit that frankly isn't all that important. Um, it really has affected a lot. I, I look at a lack of big-time competition in the industry. You know, there's nobody to push WWE in the U.S., and it shows. There's a defeatist mentality for the lower wrestling company because they're never going to get to that level, and that's just the truth. They're never going to get to that level. But WWE also gets complacent in their gluttony and in their arrogance, thinking that they are clearly better than they actually are. And going back to 2001, man, I would love nothing more than to convince somebody else out there in the world to have spent 4 or $5 million to buy WCW away from Vince McMahon before he got his mitts into it. If nothing else, selling them on the concept of even if you don't get this brand on major television, the simple fact that you have the video licensing, you have the rights to the library, you're going to make your money back many times over. But in terms of the lack of major competition has led to a lack of national television where people can apply their craft, they can improve, they can get better, makes the salary structure better for the talent. It puts everybody on edge. It makes everybody compete. You know, just the passion you think about that mid to late 90s, early 2000s time frame when there actually was competition. I mean, the whole environment of being a wrestling fan uh, almost 20 years later is so much different than it was back then. It's just not the same. As I look at it, too many wrestlers die way too young. Like every time you see a wrestler trending on Twitter, uh, you think it's because they died. I think about when Kurt Angle was announced as being the first inductee into this year's WWE Hall of Fame class. You know, my first thought was he overdosed on Oxycontin and died. And I know I'm not the only one. And you think about that, it does play with you a little bit because you feel kind of bad in some ways for supporting these guys for doing what they do because you feel like you're helping contribute to an early death for many of them. Hard to get invested in a guy when you think that you're going to significantly outlive them. I also look at WWE specifically, and they've become like most major publicly traded corporations uh, with all the flaws and trouble that go with it. Ultimately, running a stock, not a company, and I assure you there is a big significant difference. But just a lot of the way the company is structured and the way they go about doing things reeks of that out-of-touch corporation that is just struggling to make sure that they can meet their um, demands for the next dividend that they pay out. There's also been a severe lack of major stars throughout the industry created over the last decade. There are no truly massive mega stars anymore. And CM Punk and Daniel Bryan and Roman Reigns and so many other guys most certainly aren't fitting the bill, especially John Cena. John Cena, if anything, is transitioning out of wrestling and becoming a bigger star because he's not associated with wrestling at this point. All wrestling did was maybe give him some of these opportunities, but he's becoming more known for the stuff outside of wrestling than it was actually for wrestling. Now, you could say that was something that happened with The Rock, but The Rock was actually a megastar because of wrestling. He just went on to become an even bigger megastar in time doing movies. But there is a severe lack of major stars, and in particular, talking about the internet, talking about the attitude of fans and the way the product is presented, there's that real lack to me of that unanimous top guy, that, that guy that pretty much everybody could get behind, that guy that pretty much everybody can love or can get 
hate for and be angry at and want to see him get his ass kicked. We have a clear lack of both of them. And then we kind of get into the Meltzer effect, as I would call it, is the fact that we get way too much into valuing the in-ring action only, and we don't care about any of the components that lead up to it. We don't need to care about any of the components that follow up. It's all about stupid fucking star ratings. Like, how do you have a scale of zero to five stars, but then you have six star matches? I mean, that's dumb. That's, that's the lack of logic that we have in professional wrestling today. And people buy this shit. And people believe this shit. Just because somebody like a Meltzer, and it is not exclusive to him, just because somebody like Meltzer gets a lot of inside information doesn't necessarily translate automatically to him having a fucking clue. It would be the same thing as me. Just because I've watched for 30 years is no way an indication that I do or do not have a clue. But the problem is, as somebody like a Meltzer, a guy with that type of name, recognition throughout the industry, when he says something, it's going to carry some weight behind it. And sometimes how flippant he is with what he says and how reckless he is with some of the things that he says outside of news scoops, I think has been very disastrous for the business to the point now where the only thing anybody cares about is the in-ring action. Now, I understand it is professional wrestling and that is a part of it, but it is supposed to be so much more. And the fact is it's not. And to make it worse, after so many years, it's the wrestlers that are the biggest marks now. You cannot tell me from an objective viewpoint that somebody like me is a bigger mark than somebody like a Taz. And just throwing out the first name that came to my mind. And the reason I say that is, I'm supposed to be the mark, but he's the one that was in the business that still goes by his wrestling name and does a wrestling podcast. I'm the one that watches at home and I'm the one that does some videos about it, but not nearly as much as I used to and doesn't even care about it as much as I used to. But you got a lot of wrestlers that are working each night for exposure or maybe 25 or 50 bucks and they're fucking destroying themselves. And even when they get to major companies, they don't get health insurance provided because they're always signed to contracts as independent contractors. They have to pay their own social security taxes and all the other things that go along with being a independent contractor, even though you're not an independent contractor. So you work under these type of contract conditions, but I'm the mark. You give up all of this leverage and put yourself into bad situations because you want to do wrestling so bad, but I'm the mark. No, the wrestlers are the fucking marks. As Dutch Mantel, I believe, said once, he liked it better when the marks were the ones in the seats and not in the ring. To be fair, the marks have always been in the business too. I mean, a lot of people were fans first, so naturally Marks would get into the business. Furthermore, think about all these guys that tried to be their characters 24-7, 365. Who's the Marks here? Who still goes by their wrestling names? I mean, I'm just saying. Uh, but then you look at MMA and other forms of entertainment have dipped into wrestling's market share, taken away the demographics of wrestling's fans, uh, what the WWE has done in terms of its family-friendly approach that has really alienated a lot of older male adult fans. Uh, bringing in comedians and soap opera writers and having Stephanie McMahon oversee this creative infrastructure, and I use creative very, very loosely, and implementing a wrestling writing strategy that has been an absolute flippant fucking failure. All of these things leading to a significant drop in WWE and in general professional wrestling viewership. You know, not just WWE and the millions of viewers that they've siphoned away and they've bled away in recent years, but like I referenced Impact, it's lost significant market share for themselves uh, over the last three, four years. You're talking about a, a brand that used to get about a million viewers each week, maybe a little bit more on Spike TV uh, for a network that was in about 95 million homes or so. Now they're on Pop TV, who's in about 20% fewer homes, but they have 60 to 70% fewer viewership or less viewership than they did three or four years ago. That's not good. ROH, frankly, other than being a talent feeder system as a brand, is as irrelevant as ever. Lucha Underground is always going to be a niche product and nothing more. You know, some people, frankly, have to go to Japan to be entertained by professional wrestling. Japan is so bad that there are many people, especially harder core wrestling fans, that are most entertained by a product that wrestles in a time zone that is 16 hours or so different from ours. They have to go to Japan to be entertained. That's how desperate people are. 
and, 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 and just so many more things. But just looking at it, there are so many things that I could change. So many things I would want to change. I'd want to see a lot of this information stop being leaked, especially people returning, people coming back. Um, backstage bickering and bullshit. I, I don't need to know all of that all the time. Nor do I want to hear about it. You know, I'd like to see some competition again in the industry. I'd love nothing more, like I said, to go back in a time machine and get some investors or somebody and buy WCW for five or six million, outbid Vince for, and, and hope to God, buy ECW too and keep some level of major competition in the industry because it is severely lacking and it has really been detrimental. Um, I'd like to see the WWE not act like the typical publicly traded corporation with some of the ridiculous decisions that they made and some of the ridiculous things that they do. I'd like to see a little less emphasis on the in-ring action, a little more emphasis on the characters, the personalities, the storytelling, and so many of the other things that actually go into professional wrestling outside of flips and kicks. And even when talking about the matches themselves, I'd like to see where not everybody wrestled the same damn style. You shouldn't be able to watch every single match on a show and see everybody do the same basic set of moves, up to and including potentially finishers. Nobody stands out. Nobody's unique. You know, so, so what would I change? At this point in time, I think if there's one thing that I could change about professional wrestling, is I'd like to believe that it was real. I'd like it to be like it was 30 years ago when I was six years old, and I thought for legit shit that Hulk Hogan was the first person ever to body slam Andre the Giants that everything that I saw was a shoot, was legit. I didn't know about backstage politics. I didn't know about these contract squabbles. I didn't know about this guy getting a push, this guy getting buried. I didn't know about these ratings or that ratings. I didn't know about storyline arcs and character development and all this other crap and building up stars and following it up. I didn't know about competition because I didn't care because I would watch all of it because it was all awesome to me back then because, again, I thought it was all real. I didn't know about wrestlers dying way too young because, again, this was a pre-internet age 30 years ago when I was six years old and who gave a shit at that time. I didn't read the Wrestling Observer or anything else, not like I do now, but I didn't know anything about dirt cheese. I didn't care about any of that other stuff. I used to have wrestling bookers, not wrestling writers. If there's one thing that I wish I could change is that I still thought it was real because it's that it's that loss of kayfabe for me that loss of that ability to suspend disbelief that loss of ability to be sucked in and get emotionally invested that I miss most about being a wrestling fan and in large part the ironic thing is about all this is the thing I miss the most will be the one thing for sure that I won't be able to change that will never come back. I can't all of a sudden pretend it's real. I can't all of a sudden pretend that I don't know all these secrets. I don't can't pretend that I don't know all of this shit or think I know all of that shit because I do. So the one thing I could do to change my perspective on professional wrestling and help me enjoy professional wrestling is for sure the one and only change that I can't make. That figures. But I miss the days where I could buy it. I miss the days where I could believe. I miss the days where the heroes like the Hogans and the Warriors could really actually suck me in. And the villains like the Andre the Giants, the Million Dollar Man Ted DiBiase, the Ravishing Rick Rudes, and so many others could suck me in and get me to hate them so much. And I couldn't wait for my hero, whether it was a Hogan, whether it was a Macho Man, whether it was a JYD, whether it was a Jake the Snake Roberts, or whoever it might have been, I couldn't wait for them to wrestle this guy because I wanted to see this guy get his revenge and beat the shit out of this guy. I just don't have that anymore.
and is sad. So I ask you, now that I've revealed the one thing that I would want to change most about professional wrestling is the one thing that I absolutely cannot change, what is the one thing, if you could change any one thing about professional wrestling, the one thing, what would it be? Let me know in the comments below.